uh, what I want to talk about now is uh, morphological var variation, right? So, um, so uh, what we're trying to do here is um, the um, most of the languages, most of the human languages are inflective in one way or another. So you have lots of uh, variations of the same concept uh, depending on the context in which the word occurs. So you have plurals, you have various endings. So for example, uh, policy, policies, politics, politician, all of these words are referring to a similar concept. They're all roughly related to the same thing, politics. Um, um, and the words police and policeman and policemen, they also refer to the same thing, right? Uh, but policy and police don't refer to the same thing, even though uh, string-wise they're very similar, right? They're different by one letter. It's either an E or a Y on the end, but the meaning is different. So, um, so the goal of a morphological analyzer is to figure out which set of words a given word should match. So if your query is political, you want to figure out that you want to match policy and not police, for example, uh, in a document. So that's the goal. Um, now, um, it's, uh, it might seem challenging in English. It's actually a lot more challenging in other languages. So English is relatively uh, poor morphologically and fairly irregular. Uh, there are European languages that are a lot more um, rich in terms of morphology. They allow you to put very nuanced uh, spins on the word. Um, but um, in all honesty, my favorite in this regard is not a European language. European languages pale in comparison with Arabic. Right? So the Arabic is uh, effectively, uh, it's, it, it's, you know, I, I would argue it's the king of morphology because they, 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 they've taken morphology to a whole new level. Right? So, um, and, and I'm not going to spend much time on it, on it, but just to give you a hint of what's happening. So um, a typical European language has tens of thousands to a hundred thousand different roots, right? And then you take these roots and you start appending suffixes onto them. And in some European languages, you append prefixes as well, right? Eastern European languages like prefixes as well as suffixes. Um, so uh, in Arabic, you have a much smaller set of roots. Uh, the set of roots is very compact. It actually measures in, in a couple of thousands. Um, and these roots are uh, made up of uh, consonants only, right? And uh, what these roots do is they carry a very basic sort of fundamental, fundamental dimensions of meaning, right? So, for example, the root KTB, it means something having to do with writing. And then what you do is you take these roots and you start adding things to them. So by adding prefixes, things before the root, suffixes, things after the root, and infixes, things that you infuse inside the root, uh, you form a whole lot of words that are different, but they're all related to writing in one way or another. Right? So you have this very powerful uh, way of forming words, starting with very basic uh, units. And, uh, and that causes, of course, lots of problems for retrieval engines, because, uh, because on the surface, these all look very, very different. So you need some way to get um, at the root form.